Um, and um, I just need a minute to recharge. I forgot where I was. So, um, so I, I tried. I tried in picking things here. Tried to pick things that I read and I saw initially as abstract, and then I went into later as I saw the figuration in them. And I think because I'm trained as a figure painter, I see everything as figurative. But I, I try to start with, first start not knowing what it is. Like when you look at a picture and you go, there's a kid at the academy, I think who's a wonderful painter named um, Michael Cervo, who Michael Gallagher knows. And a friend of mine came over and saw his paintings and said, wow, that's like, it's nothing. And then you look at it and you realize it's something and then it's nothing again. And, and that nothing is very, very important. Um, and that's what I want in my own painting. I call myself, though, because I was trained as a figure painter and cast drawing and all that stuff, that I always say without my glasses on, I'm a nearsighted realist. So like, right now, <laughs> what I'm looking at, that's what I'm painting, always. That's all I see. Um, but then when I edit it and change it, this is what I see. And then I go, oh. So, um, and I think we all paint what we long for, or we all we find what we long for, and what what gives us pleasure. And I don't think any of us would make paintings if it weren't for the pleasure base that first stimulated us to to put a pencil to paper or a crayon or paint or watercolor or, or pastel or whatever it is, we, or clay, whatever. I mean, there's some pleasure association. I think that gets over-intellectualized too often with almost all people I know and with most cocktail parties I've ever been to. And I think it's really important to stay in touch with your, the pleasure base in your life. And so no matter how you paint, I think it's really important to understand why. And why? And this is where I always lose people. I can see from your expression, <laughs> you don't, you don't believe me. <laughs> yeah, that's a great expression. <laughs> Mr. Bird, right? Brewer, right? Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. a representational artist too. I draw and paint. I don't think you can be abstract unless you know how to be realistic to start with. You have to have some sort of skill, the facility, and the tools to. I. I used to feel that way, and I'm amazed at how how much my feelings change. But I, a long time ago, somebody said to me that there's no morality in making a picture. It either works or it doesn't. I don't care how it's made, or or who made it, or or what, whether they used the brush that Velasquez used, or if they used a Q-tip, or if they spit on it. If it works and it feels felt when I look at it, if it stimulates those frontal lobes. I went to a wonderful lecture the other night at the New York Studio School where someone was, and I'm still thinking about it, it was way over my head, but it was, she, it was a woman named Siri Husvet who wrote my favorite art book called The Mysteries of the Rectangle, where she talks about Giorgione, Chardin, um, Philip Gustin, Joan Mitchell, Gerhard Richter, <coughs> still like painting, and something else. Um, and I just love it. But she was talking about chimpanzees that in scientific tests that when one of them makes a gesture like this and rips like straw apart or something, that something goes off in their in their brain. Like and the exact same thing goes off in the brain of another one that watches one do that. So, and then the point was making visual stimulation. Like, I mean, how you see, and what happens in your head when you're seeing. And then there was also a study, she said, and this is very, I'm giving you really the, like, the kindergarten version of this, but that when someone looked at a painting of, of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, where Adam is, well, the, the, the gesture of his, his um, Body language. When you look at when a man, when a man, a woman look at that, they get, they get the same, you know, whatever it's called, 
you would know, um, <laughs> that, that happens when you make that gesture in a genuine way. And so what happens when you look at a picture? Like, what are you really seeing? And, and sure, if you look at a representational painting, yeah, it would, the Michelangelo, yeah, that happens. Something also happens when you look at um, abstract painting. As a kid, I had to go to um, ice skating class and ballroom dancing class. I, from three years old on, I wore a little suit and skates. I hated it. I hated it, hated it. And I've never done it again. But it's, there's something about that movement and fluidity of movement and differentiation of speed in, in one floor that it contains space, whether it's an ice skating rink, a ballroom, or a rectangle of a painting, that I want to have that fluidity of speed. And that's something I look for. It has nothing to do with abstraction or representation. I mean, it, it, it can do, it can exist in space, hopefully it exists in both. And if it doesn't, usually I'm flummoxed, and, and if I'm flummoxed, I try to figure out why. And if I figure out why, I try to figure out whether the painting works, whether or not it mirrors what I'm looking for already, because most of us only see what we already know. But I'm, I'm always trying to see something I don't know. And then once I get too far out on the limb, I run back to what I know. That's it. Mo's on the floor now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to say, but if you have any questions based on what we've both talked about, we certainly would be willing to answer.